Hi guys, it seems that some Muslims really hate this video. I don't know what is wrong with this. I have no idea what I have done here. A non-Muslim has some questions. First was flagged as hate speech. I took out everything that could remotely be considered to be hateful. I took out everything and I applied softener to the whole thing and I resubmitted it. Well, just a few hours later, some people have now, and we get this, flagged it as misleading. In other words, I get a notification. I don't get a notification. This is the problem. Um, somebody said what happened because I just watched it and now it's gone. So I went here and it says a non-Muslim has some questions and it's locked as private. Now, if it is locked as private, I, I didn't know that. I mean, this is like a new form of censorship by YouTube. And I looked, well, videos locked as private, we believe in addressing abuse in ways that can create real positive impact while also making the site great for creators and viewers. Whatever. This is such bullshit. If your video is identified as violating our policy on misleading metadata, Okay, misleading metadata. Metadata is the title, the description, or the tags. And this is why it will be locked as private. So some Muslim apologist has gone and said, well, I think it's misleading. I don't think it represents what it should be. And therefore, it should be flagged. And now it's set to private. So I must have touched a nerve somewhere that people cannot handle the truth. They cannot handle reality. So what they're doing is they're saying, we need to get rid of this video. We need to silence this. On the other hand, there are people who, I mean, they, I, I don't know how this works, but somebody on the channel of this official Speaker's Corner channel, an Abu Ibu said, Salam, brothers, are you deleting comments? There's a video out by an atheist claiming you're deleting comments on the video and he provided proof in the video. Now, if this is the case, you might be tempted to delete my comment too. Can I urge you, though, to address their comments instead of using the hide this user and so on? It's far better to have a continued debate on the comment section. So, no. He says we need to help guide people instead of just silencing them. Many non-Muslims may watch this, but they may not initially believe what you say and go into the comments to look at people who have disputed your arguments. But if you counter that logically and sensibly, it goes a long way. So, And then he concludes, if we hold the truth, then we shouldn't be afraid of non-Muslims non-Muslim comments that are critical. And I agree with that. That's exactly my point. So this seems to be another Muslim who is asking official <laughs> Speaker's Corner channel, hashtag Dawah, why they are doing that. And now here's, and this, this, uh, this beats it, right? They say now we filter all comments for profanity, etc. And sometimes we see a lot of rude comments. We may, now, remember what I said, and I wrote this twice, uh, same thing, and both were removed. There's no profanity here. What I say is nonsense, Lot, Noah, Jesus, all different, very different. Because that was the claim they made that they're all the same. They're not. If the two books have similar stories, why should anyone believe them? So I'm asking a question. And then I say the Muslim, and now referring to this Haman that he quoted, that he, that he claimed exists, the Muslim simply lies, unashamedly. No, Haman is not mentioned anywhere in Egypt, and least of all on the Rosetta Stone. And that's a fact. Okay, that's the truth. That's reality. And then why would he ask how Muhammad knew that? Did Muhammad author the Quran? So there's two or three whatever statements and three questions. There's no profanity. There's nothing here that is rude. And yet official speaker's corner says, well, we may do a mass delete also sometimes to clear up a backlog of comments. We may also do a mass delete due to spam. Well, my channel is called Stop Spamming. Hmm. Then somebody says, of course they delete critical comments. Are you surprised? Skeptics commenting on any Dawah video don't actually expect their comment to remain. And again, official speaker's corner answer, and this, ah, this the hypocrisy is amazing. We do not delete comments. We have to clear comments for publication. So sometimes you can have 100 comments to clear in half an hour. And as such, if a majority are profanity, etc., we will generally just do a mass delete. We are now deleting the profanity-laden comments and then just doing a mass approve instead. Now, this is another lie because, and I have added this as a, as, as a screen capture, this is what I have received as a message from them. 
So don't believe anything they say. And this is the message I got from official speakers corner channel hashtag Dawa a month ago. It was shared privately. This is what they wrote to me. None of your comments are being published from all of your channels. Just thought to let you know. You're blocked on most of the channels. Have a nice day. Now this is Speaker's Corner Analyze. This is what I get from official Speaker's Corner channel hashtag Dawa. And they are saying we do not delete comments. And then they send to me, your comments are deleted. You're blocked on all the channels. Have a nice day. So this is the hypocrisy. It's amazing. And on YouTube, the channels that are propagating lies and who deceive others, these, these snake oil salesmen, they're welcome to stay. But a channel who is opposing this, a channel who's exposing this, a channel where I try and show reality and I try and show the truth, this is being deleted. And that is the only thing that Muslims have left. Censorship. Just shut the channels down that are criticizing us and maybe they will go away. And then you can only hear our voice, which is full of lies and full of bullshit. Oh, sorry, I'm not allowed to say bullshit. Full of nonsense, which is not true. And then nobody can criticize us and that's it. And then we have everything that we want. Okay. Now I'm adding, because I'm not going to do the whole video again. I'm just adding this, the, the, the second part showing... Number one, what they're doing with the comments, how they are deleting them. And the second thing is, no, there is no Haman anywhere in hieroglyphs, anywhere in Egypt. Least of all on the Rosetta Stone, and I'm explaining all this. Okay, guys, have fun. Hi, guys. I have to redo this video as scared Muslims have decided to attack me instead of those who lie and deceive. And as someone gloated and told me my video was taken down due to hate speech, and since Google does not state why a video is removed, we now know that they simply false flag a video they don't like as hate speech. And then YouTube takes it down without checking or doing anything about it. So these scared Muslims, they have to apply tricks and fraud to silence the truth. Okay, so I'm going to redo it. I will not voice my opinion freely. I will not express my disgust. And I will not call the disgraceful, dishonest guy an arsehole this time and just present the truth. And if you didn't get it, that was satire, <laughs> okay? Okay, I'm going to spend, <clears throat> you know, just a few minutes looking at a channel called Official. It's, it's, it's official. I don't know why they call it official. Official Speakers Corner Channel and then a hash and Dawa. I mean, Dawa is Arabic, which means tell people a story that will somehow get them to join the club of Islam. And it's all in capital letters, of course, because capital letters are much more important. The example I will use here is a video called A non muslim I have problems reading when it's capital S. A non-Muslim has some questions. Hashtag Quran Leicester Square. So uh, what I'll do is I'll take a quick look how they do and then what they do. So if you watch a video on, on Google, on YouTube, and hear something that is wrong, you write a comment and correct the mistake. Well, at least I do. And I hope that the person or the people who made the mistake will learn from this and avoid this in the future. And that's what I did. I also try and point this out to others watching the video that there is a problem here and that they should look into this before accepting everything at face value. Here, however, on this channel, things seem to work a bit differently as my comment shown here suddenly whoop, disappears when I'm not logged in with my own channel name. And I made sure the sorting is set from top comments to the more realistic newest first. And that's how you can compare the two views side by side and you can immediately appreciate that my comment has been removed from view. And it says, if you look, it says 11 comments. Yet when you count the comments, only nine are visible. Two are removed from view. And what a coincidence, I made two comments with two different names. Uh, granted, critical comments when I tested this, pointing out the dishonesty. They're gone. Poof. So the people running this channel, they're cowards. They are so afraid of me and my words. This is just words, okay? I'm, I'm just using words. I'm not threatening them. There's no hate here. I'm just pointing out that it's dishonest. And they are so afraid of this that they need to block me so that I'm unable to express my opinion on what they're doing. And I can't inform others of their deception. 
Now, in the intro, you can clearly see the word comment. But if you do and you're honest, your comment is removed. It's hypocrisy at work, just so that Islam can die a bit slower. But the video itself is actually quite interesting because it shows how blatantly some Muslim apologists lie and deceive others. It shows to what lengths they will go to get their fangs and claws into a non-Muslim if they think they can convert them. It's, it's actually quite pathetic. So let's take a look at the contents of the video I'm taking as an example. If you're a Muslim, please listen to what I'm saying. Try and appreciate why I am doing this and why you are hearing this. I'm not the one making the claims. The Muslim is making the claims, not me. I'm reacting to the claims because he makes many claims, all right? Claims which are obviously false and complete fabrication. And he knows it because that's why I am blocked. So I can't show reality and demonstrate how dishonest this Muslim is and what the reality actually says. So he starts off with, if you look at the Rosetta Stone. If you look at the Rosetta Stone, when the hieroglyphics were uh, finally deciphered. And just as a quick background, the Rosetta Stone he mentions does exist. Yep, it does. And it's, it's got a text on it, a text in three languages, which enabled experts in the field to take the words one by one and assign them to hieroglyphs, because Egyptian hieroglyphs was one of the three languages. And they had not been decoded or deciphered 200 years ago when the stone was found. Now, where you don't need to be an expert is reading translations of the text on this Rosetta Stone. It's a decree of a king. The Muslim claims that when they found the Rosetta Stone, they looked for the employees of the Pharaoh and or Pharaoh. I never know if Pharaoh is the real explanation. Pharaoh is the new modern way. I don't ever know which way to use it. So the Pharaoh. And there they found the name Haman, as mentioned in the Quran. Look at profession. the Rosetta Stone when the hieroglyphics were uh, uh, finally deciphered. And they look at the role of employees for Pharaoh. Haman was there. And this is what I find so despicable. It's such a, a blatant and outrageous lie. It makes my blood boil. The way he says it, it implies that the name and profession of Haman is found on the Rosetta Stone. It's not. It is beyond me how he can look at himself in a mirror, but he doesn't stop there because if he did not mean to say that Haman is found on the Rosetta Stone, he definitely says there are hieroglyphs which mention this Haman, his profession and his close affiliation with Pharaoh. Just Pharaoh, not A or one of them, just Pharaoh. Now we have the hieroglyphics confirming there was a chief builder yeah. called Haman. Whatever. It does not exist. It's a lie. Now, how can I be polite about being a, a lie? Can I, can I be, uh, well, it's not actually quite resembling the truth? No, it's a lie, okay? So if I'm not allowed to say that something is a lie, I don't know where we are. You need to prove that this is true. And if you can't prove it's, it's not there, it doesn't exist, then please don't say that it exists. Now, I've gone very deep into this and looked at this, and I found that it's a lie. There is no such thing. It is not true, which is why he does not say where and how and just makes the general claim. And then ask the non-Muslim how the Prophet could possibly have known. How did the Prophet know? Now I'm asking you now. Forgetting the PBUH and shifting the burden of proof to the one not making a claim. I mean, he's, he's the one making all the claims. So why should now the, the guy listening to the claims suddenly explain how Muhammad, who did not come up with the Quran in the first place, but it was dictated to him, why, why should he be the one who knows something about this? It's, it's just simply dishonest, fabricating stuff to no end other than impressing some non-Muslims. Oh boy. Is this really what Islam does to a human being? No morality, ethics, honesty, compassion, integrity, no dignity? Really? Is that all a Muslim is? Why are you a Muslim apologist? Can't you, can't you do it honestly? And look at the Muslims standing around him. Do they stop him? No, they consent, smiling. To top it all off, he goes and asks for money for this disgusting performance. Now, as a non-believer, I, I don't think I could live with myself being such a liar. and I would consider myself a criminal. The Muslim here happily continues and cheerfully adds some more lies and still asks for money for this. Never a worry. I'm actually unable to adequately voice my disgust at so much trickery and deceit. And I'm not allowed to anyway. Oh boy. But uh, come on, this is why I prefer my approach and integrity. But then according to this guy, he will end up being rewarded and I will roast in hell. 
Is that why they call this a good and loving God? <laughs> Anyone is more than welcome to check the facts I've collected and I present on my Quran Claims channel and where I show some of the pretty deep research I undertook to get everything right, even resulting in popular Islamic pages and, and even Harun Yahya changing their tune over time when it comes to the claims surrounding Haman. And this took months, right? So I cannot put everything, this, the, the hours and hours, I cannot put this here into this short video. But the hieroglyphs pro prove there was Haman there. So when Muhammad, uh, Muhammad said it, this is what people said. Look, look, he's making up stories. No, no Haman has been found in any hieroglyphs, ever. It's just a lie concocted by the corrupt French doctor Maurice Piquet, something like 30 years ago. It's a lie, nothing more. So why repeat and spread a lie? Someone even told me that, you know, they remade the old Wikipedia page on this, showing what level of dishonesty we're dealing with here. Why? It's, it's so easy to, to go and, and research this. I've got this on my blog. I've got, I don't know how many videos on this to show how easy it is. But it's really sad that people can't point out something good about Islam, that they need to resort to this kind of trickery to impress others, ignoring the truth. And then why block someone who can lead you, who can help you and get you to reality and the truth? Are these Muslims on the channel really such bad people and beyond all hope? I hope not. Anyway, thanks for taking interest in the video. And if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down why you liked it or why you didn't and what you would have done better. Thank you.